We're back with Merlin Schumacher, the winner of round one of YCS Bochum 2015. Merlin, congratulations. Thank you very much. That was quite the performance we've seen there from you in the feature match area. To be honest, uh, my deck did exactly what I wanted it to do and I got quite lucky with the draws. Okay. So, um, you and Sona are good friends as far as I'm aware. Yeah, we are. Uh, was he a little bit salty after the match? Well, obviously, yeah, because uh, he didn't get to play the game at all. But yeah. But, yeah, I think it's still better losing to a friend so you know your friend is undefeated than losing to a stranger. That's a, that's a good point. Okay. So let's talk about your deck because, like you said, it did exactly what you wanted it to do. Um, Shadol has been the number one deck. Necros came around. Nobody played Shadol, so to speak. Suddenly it's back. What happened? Well, people figured that uh, Necros has a very linear playstyle and you can really put stuff like Floodgates in between it. That happened in the last format with the Clifford deck playing all the skill drains and Venice Emptiness, and since that was limited by the Forbidden Limited list, um, people found new ways to stop the Necros such strategy. Okay, in your particular way, what is that? That's uh, I'm maining a uh, playset of Mistake, mm -hmm. and I'm also maining Mind Crushes and Venice Emptiness. And um, also, I'm taking advantage of the fact that Shadol has a very aggressive playstyle and can deal damage quick and will grind um, Necros out of resources if you can keep the floodgates up. All right. So um, if we two are going to be very good friends, and I'm like, hey, Merlin, I can do you a favor. I can, to I can go over to the scorekeeper. Who do you want to play for the rest of the day? You would be saying Necros yep. all day uh, long. Th that's what it's designed to do. And on the same uh, part, it can also beat the rogue decks consistently because it's an inherently consistent deck. Mm. That's like mm. it's, it's a powerful former meta call, like former meta deck, and uh, by that it's superior to the rogue decks in its own strategy. And it, on the same time, it's very versatile. And by maining the floodgates, it can beat okay. the main strategy. This is quite the quite the sales pitch we get here for Shador. <laughs> Um, all right, we've had a couple of guys talking to them and they, they were very big fans of the Star Seraph. And they listed Star Seraph as the main reason why Shadol is a good deck any, uh, again. You're not playing Star Seraph. Well, the main reason is um, the Star Seraphs, ev everybody's prepared for it, and I'm the type of guy that doesn't like to play stuff people are prepared for. Okay. And um, that's what my deck is all about, like playing Shadol, an unexpected version, floodgate heavy, and trying to not let your opponent play the game at all. Mm. And um, people were expecting Star Seraphs. Also, uh, Star Seraphs are not that good uh, anymore if people main a lot of Maxis, and I've seen a lot of Maxis lately. <laughs> and on top of that, uh, Star Seraphs have that one big combo, and if you don't pull it off, it's just another light type you use for your fusions. Yeah. And uh, I found Lanceas and Veilers to be better for that. Let's talk about Lanceas, because um, Rob also pointed out more and more people are picking up the card and think this is a really good card. What do you think? I mean, you're playing it, so obviously you're, you're convinced that it's a good card. To be honest, I was doubtful at first, but Long, a friend of mine uh, I tested with a lot, he convinced me to play it because uh, it can stop like the key burst out play of the Necros deck. It can like uh, in, uh, disable him from banishing those uh, ritual spells and get another one. Yeah. Also, it can prevent the Trishula effect from hitting, and that's essential. Like if you if you get a crucial Trishula, you probably gonna lose and you can prevent that effectively. Also, it's a light and you can use it to fusion uh, mm -hmm. to synchro summon okay. because it's level five as well. So um, you you got a couple of these hand traps in your deck, and we've seen you holding on to even several copies of Effect Veiler. You didn't drop them when Sona was, ex for example, going for a Senju. That means that you have to save them for the right moment. Well, at that point, uh, it was a chance really coin flip. I was gonna. I was debating to play it, but then I figured Senju was doing nothing than get another Valkyrus and buy more time. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I can let him have that. In return, I'll get another free draw for my for my play, and he doesn't advance his game state. He oh. just thins out it's, it's his stack by two cards. Okay. So um, let's talk about it in a second. But that means something to take away for a new player who is not as 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 accomplished as you are, because you've won a YCS before and <laughs> done well at a couple of events. Um, one of the, the things to take away from this interview is you need to know when to drop your effect veilers. Yeah, timing is very essential. If you're playing traps, it was essential the whole time when uh, ever since the game started. Back mm -hmm. in the days when you only had like one mirror falls and one power trap, one ring of destruction, it was essential to use that at the right time. And now it's the more uh, hand trap based and you have to wait for the right time, figure and know How what to do. How do I know them. what is the right time? Practice. practice, straight up practice. You, okay. you gotta, you gotta have been going through the same situations over and over and over again to get the uh, the idea to estimate what your opponent might have, what they still might have, what the outs are to have a rough idea what they could have, and then mm, okay, okay, and you can definitely read an opponent. Yeah. So, uh, so you're like, okay, let's talk about this game in particular. The first game you're 
basically winning with mistake. Flipping mistake, Sona doesn't have an out, you gaining more and more of an advantage. Yeah. What happens when you're side decking? What did you side in? What did you side out? Um, I mean, definitely the Vanities Fiends came in. Yeah, in, the, in this particular uh, match, I sided in two Vanities Fiends, uh, one Thunder King Ryo, and uh, two Antelope Spell Fragrants. I was debating siding in three, but um, since uh, I was not very sure that he was going to let me start, because he might have. I, I was expecting the decree because we obviously discussed our decks and we tested together as yep, well, so yep, I knew, okay. had a rough idea of what he was siding. I was debating whether he would not let me start, and if, I, if he would not let me start, and his Spell Fragrants would not be good. As, as well, Long played a similar version a week ago, and uh, he lost to Alpai in, uh, in top cut because Alpai knew he was siding anti-spell fragrance mm. and he wouldn't let him start and just straight up started by setting all his ritual spells and <laughs> anti-spell fragrance was essentially that and that's why I didn't side a whole place. Such a fox that Alpai guy. <laughs> All right. So, um, did you side out the mistakes? No, I kept them because kept they're them. so good. I expected the decrease. I was like, if he has the decree, it's not that bad because I sided out breakthrough skills and um, I sided out bottomless trap hole as well. So I reduced the traps and put in new traps as well. So I didn't in really increase my trap okay. rate. And I was like, I'll take the chance. Okay. So um, then you have you are able to resolve the vanity fiend. You are able to uh, summon it to the field. What is going through your head? How many outs does Sona have, in your opinion? In my opinion, he has but two. He has, he has, he has, uh, I expected him to side out the Book of Eclipses, which he did, and I expected him to side out the DD Warrior Lady, because that was the whole idea. I was debating it with Long. He was like, don't side Vanity's Fiend, because everybody is playing more monster outs to the Gin Lock, and uh, therefore Vanity's Fiend is not that good. In the main deck. Yeah, but in the side deck, right? But, but then, it's, as I said, against Shadolds, they don't expect that to happen because Shadol doesn't have a Gin Lock in the main deck, and mm. uh, they don't expect ex expect the Vanity's Fiend to come in. So they will side out the uh, Warrior Lady because it's just a one for one trade yeah, off. Yeah. You have to re waste your normal summon for. So they'll side that out and expect that. That's why I side in the Vanity's Fiends, and yeah, it worked out quite nicely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like because it, it, it turned out he sided out and he had the Rhoda when I, uh, in a crucial situation where he would have probably get, gotten rid of it. And yeah, but we thought game. okay, he's got he's got the reinforcement. He is going to be able to deal with it. And then only then we realized, oh my god, he sided it out. So he only had the, it really had a Regeki as an out and possibly a Book of Eclipse. Maybe he left in one copy. Okay, yeah. Wow. So everything has been going your way. I can't complain. <laughs> if, if, if I keep playing Necro stacks and keep ha getting the right draws like I did, I started awesome as well with the sh Shadow Games and the Shadow Hatchuck yep. and the Anti-Spell Fragrance to buy me a turn. That's all it, that it did. It, it made him uh, not do anything on his first turn, side everything. Then he had to decree the whole game and his Anti-Spell Fragrance didn't do anything else, but it wasted his first turn. That's yep. what it was good. So I had the upper hand starting with the Vanity Scene before he could like s start uh, Ritual Summoning. All right. Um, what was your goal for the weekend? My like goal for the weekend. You came here definitely very prepared, as we can tell. Well, my goal is always to reach top cut and possibly win because I, I think there's no point in playing an event if you don't want to win. Because you, uh, obviously you want to have fun, yep. but also if you play on a, like for such a long time and you prepare and invest so much time, you want to win. You want it to yeah to be a rewarding experience. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to um, say to somebody who is getting into the game who doesn't really understand all the popular decks so far? Wh what can he do? You said practice, practice, practice. I think it's very important to stay uh, like to stick around accomplished players. Like what I did back when I was not like that experienced, I would always play test and watch experienced players as, as much as possible, read up on the feature matches, watch the feature matches, and tr try to understand why they did which move at which time. Yeah. And that helped me a lot. Okay. Well, nowadays, you also get the stream, of course. Yeah, and it's really <laughs> useful. Can, you can big shout out for you doing this. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, of course, we got the interviews with the experts who will then run us through the moves that we didn't understand. So, thank you again, Merlin. Thank you. Best of luck this weekend. Um, I hope to see you tomorrow because this was quite the performance. And, I'm uh, hoping so, too. All right. That's it for our round one. Uh, we're going to be back for round two.